Okay, I'm going to map in some of the dark chunks, the little islands in his hair. It's going to look for things that are obviously, here's a, there's a piece of really dark stuff in here. Again, I, you always want to go find the direction if you're going to kind of rough it in. There's a chunk there, there's a piece up here that's really dark. Anything that's really definite, there's a dark piece. There's a piece down in here. That piece I have. There's a piece over here that's really pretty solid dark stuff. It kind of falls apart in here, so I'm going to keep a real raggedy line. But basically, if they generalize a little bit, that's a really dark area. There's actually a piece of light right here, too. There's like a piece in here that's a little lighter. So I got, I did this, which I think I did. Got the shape of that highlight area. And then I said, oh, okay, well, there's the highlight area. I kind of went around that in general. Then I've got this dark piece in here. What's going to be left is kind of medium. So I've got to outline this dark chunk. Uh, and that medium piece kind of runs over down into here. There's a little bit of a highlight. A little lighter piece right in here. And this light piece kind of goes down into here. That's probably enough information in here. Something like his ear, there's a very definite line here, but then it starts to kind of fuzz out into the other color, uh, other tones here, so I'm going to kind of create a raggedy line. Let's say about where does that dark stuff end. All right. So your, your map is, you know, things that look like that very definite lines are definite lines, but when you have one tone blurring into another, you're probably going to have this more kind of raggedy edge line. It's taking your best shot at where that lighter dark ends, like down, down in here. This dark in here, eh, the darkest part of this lives in here. And where does it end? I have to take my shot at there. It's, this dark piece is really in here. There's a little bit of a lighter chunk in here. And really his lips, his lips aren't separate. It's like, here's his lip, and the shape of his lip, the tone of his lip kind of goes right out and kind of merges into this other tone out here. And your brain doesn't like this. Your brain wants to say separate lips, you know, lips are separate from there, but the tone of his lips in here actually fades right out into, into his cheek over here. And that turns into this. The lightest part you know, this kind of wraps around this. The lightest part in here kind of lives right in here. And again, you don't want to just do it like a casual. You don't want to go in here and go, oh, there's, you know, a super casual area bloop around it. You want to say, well, kind of track your way around that. There's a dark part in here. A lot of times you'll see a light edge out on the very edge here. Even on the dark side, there might be a light edge here. But Okay, so at that. So I want to look at the hair a little bit. I might put in a few lines of direction here, like, well, if I get this dark piece, yeah, okay. Um, so it's going to look a little odd for a while. There you can kind of see it like that, but that's the map of that area. So one real important thing, I'm going to start to mess this drawing up. <clears throat> Don't start shading in here in some wacky direction. If the hair goes in this direction, we could even put a couple lines of direction in here. Um, his hair is going kind of this way and this way and this way. The general direction of his hair. Okay. So when I have that, got some lines in there, the, the general direction of his hair. Then when you're shading this, don't go in and start shading one way and the other. You, should, you want to shade in the direction that his hair is going. Again, we're going to keep it a little too light. So this is all kind of medium stuff in here. This is this big chunk of dark stuff in here. But you want to keep going in the direction that his hair is going, otherwise your brain's going to freak out. So this is a medium area. There's a big chunk of dark stuff up in here. Again, and that hair's going maybe in a different direction a little bit. You do not want to outline these things. They're just maps of general areas of where things are going to go. And it's going to come up looking kind of very blocky at first. You're going to have dark areas. 
You're going to have medium areas that you're shading in the direction of where the hair is going. And then I'm going to just go around the highlight area for now. We're going to leave that out over here. The hair's going downhill a little bit more. So you're going to definitely shade in that direction. I'm doing this way too fast because I don't want you to get bored during this video. That's that, that's that, that's that big chunk of dark in here. And always go in the direction that the hair is going. There's the dark piece, there's the medium piece, and we're just going to go around the highlight area. Changing direction here. His hair's going to go going more downhill over here. So it's going to start to look very blocky, but that's okay for now. I went back over some lines here that are really too light. I think I'm going to, there, we don't want to have areas with outlines around them. So if it comes in too heavy, I might have to come back and I just want a ghost line in here. I might have to come back and erase some of this. I just want to be able to vaguely see the area, just barely see the area that I'm going to land in. It's still there. It's probably hard to see, but it's still there. And then that hair is going in a completely different direction. There's hair on top going this way, but the hair underneath is probably going that way. So I'm going to shade it. This hair is going downhill. And that's, this is a really dark area. So this is going to go this way. And then this medium stuff on top of it is actually going to be going this way. Again, it's better to keep it a little too light. You can always push it in more. This is a dark area. I'm going to have to push this in more later. But that's going a different direction. This is going this way, and this hair is going this way. This is all dark stuff. So once I put this medium tone in, like this, if I'm going the right direction, it doesn't have to be completely filled in. It can be a little bit random, a little darker areas, a little lighter areas. Then this dark in here is going to cut into it until it starts to appear. You always pay attention to the direction the hair is going. When you start to get other shading happening in here, um, again, it's a good idea to be consistent. If you're right-handed, it's probably easier to go this way. If you're left-handed, it's probably easier to go this way. I would, even something like his eye, eyebrows, um, for right now, we're going to put them in too light, but don't change direction. Uh, we'll put them in too light. Later, we're going to come back and say his eyebrows are going in a certain direction. Right. I really don't want outlines around that area. This is eventually going to turn into a darker area. It's like, even though you might think it's a line, I look at it like it's a, just an island. It's a chunk of stuff. Um, just a chunk of black or a chunk of um, gray or dark gray or medium gray. It starts to fill in here and it's going to start to form. Doesn't look very good on the image there, and I'm going way too fast, but you'll see it's going to start to form the face. Take your time. Don't go too hard. Don't go too fast. Pay attention to detail. Don't shade in one direction and then start. People shade over here, and they'll do this, and then they, go, when they don't want to go over the line, so they start changing direction. Don't do that. I would say shade this. In, if you're righty, change. go this way. If you're lefty, shade in that direction. Just, I'm going to need the room today. I'm recording something. No That's all right. Oh, somebody just came in my room. All right. That's probably enough of that.